The venture capital firm A16Z just released their fourth installment of the Top 100 Gen AI Consumer Apps Report, highlighting the most visited and downloaded AI tools across web and mobile platforms in order to track which AI applications are getting real traction. Hi, I'm Grant from The Neuron, and I've spent way too many hours digging through A16Z's report so you don't have to. Today, I'll break down the most used AI apps on the planet. Not the ones with the fanciest marketing or who raised the most money, but the ones actual humans are actually using to get stuff done. Here's what we're covering. The AI chatbot war and who's actually winning. How AI video tools finally got good enough to use. The rise of vibe coding, and yes, that's the actual term being used. The weird disconnect between what's popular and what's profitable and a quick rundown of every specialized tool worth knowing about. Now, let's dive in before these AI tools become smart enough to start making their own YouTube videos about us. First up, the chatbot wars. So the undisputed heavyweight champion of AI assistance is still ChatGPT, with a mind-boggling 400 million weekly users processing over a billion queries every day. For context, that's like if every single person in the US, Canada, and Mexico combined was using ChatGPT and asking three questions a day. Three major updates have totally transformed ChatGPT in the past year, and honestly, the whole AI marketplace with it. First, GPT 4.0 dropped in May of 2024, letting you actually talk to ChatGPT in real time and show it images. What are these objects in Spanish? The objects you're showing are una manzana and un plátano in Spanish. Nice fruit choice. Remember when we had to type everything to our AI? That's so 2023. Then came advanced voice mode in August. Key capabilities we're really excited to share with you today is real-time conversational speech. I've tested this tool extensively, and I can confirm it's way less robotic than my last Zoom call with actual humans. Plus, it just got a new upgrade, which made it even more lifelike. Hello. I see you're wearing a black leather jacket and a light-colored shirt underneath. Finally, the O1 model arrived in October of 2024, dramatically improving reasoning abilities. This is the thinking out loud feature that actually shows you how the AI works through a problem step by step. There's also a new version called O3 Mini, which basically does the same thing, just faster. Pro tip. If you're still just using the free version, you're missing out on the real power. The $20 a month plus subscription unlocks GPT 4.0, which is exponentially better than the free 3.5 model. And definitely try search GPT for anything time sensitive. It's like having Google, but with actual helpful answers. Next up is DeepSeek. In case you missed it, there's a new challenger in the AI world, and it's not from Silicon Valley. DeepSeek launched in earnest on January 20th of this year, and somehow it became the number two most popular AI chatbot in just 10 days. As of last month, they had over 61 million monthly active users and about 22 million active daily users. The standout feature is called Deep Think Mode, which responds to every query with thinking, followed by updates that read like the chatbot talking to itself as it figures out the answers. It's kind of like watching your smart friend solve a problem on a whiteboard, complete with all of the hmm and wait, let me try this instead moments. If you haven't tried it yet, you can download the app or hit up their website. The interface is pretty similar to ChatGPT, but with more emphasis on showing its work. Try asking it something complicated, like a programming challenge. That's where it really shines. Now, if you prefer not to go through DeepSeek themselves, there are actually many third-party providers who host DeepSeek too. Why? Because DeepSeek is called open source. Unlike OpenAI, which actually is closed source, DeepSeek lets anyone run their models as long as you have enough compute power. Companies like Grok, with a Q, Fireworks, and even NVIDIA, as well as many others, host DeepSeek for you to use on their own servers. So take a look at those options as well. Coming in at number 10 on the web with about 89 million monthly visits is Anthropic's Claude. If ChatGPT is your hyper-productive coworker, then Claude is like your thoughtful friend with an English literature degree. Claude's superpower is its massive context window. You can literally upload entire books for it to analyze. You can feed Claude 100 page reports and ask for a bullet point list of all the key insights, and it will deliver them in less than a minute. Also, Claude helped us write this video. Thanks, Claude. We find Claude's response tend to be more nuanced and uh, measured compared to other AI assistants. It's like the difference between getting advice from someone who just splits out the first answer versus someone who really thinks it through. 
Sitting at number 11 with roughly 82 million monthly visits, perplexity is what happens when AI and Google have a baby. It's search, but actually helpful. So the key differentiator is citations. Perplexity shows you exactly where its information comes from, making it perfect for research or fact checking. It's essentially saying, don't trust me, verify me, which is refreshingly honest for an AI. I've been using it for market research lately, and the ability to get cited information without having to dig through 10 pages of Google results has saved me probably hours. You do need to watch out for perplexity citing the wrong sources, however. We find it can only reliably cite three or four of the sources it finds at a time, and often gets the information right, but the link wrong. So always remember to double check the sources it links in its sources list. Here's a quick fire round of a few other assistants worth knowing about. Character AI, which lets you chat with Iron Man or Jane Austen, if that's your jam. Microsoft Copilot, which is integrated with Office so it can actually fix that PowerPoint that's due tomorrow. Gemini, which is Google's answer to ChatGPT with slightly less hype but solid capabilities. Fun fact, Gemini just released a new version called 2.5 Pro Experimental that now beats ChatGPT and Claude at many tasks. It's still in testing right now, which means it's not in the Gemini app, but it is on Google's AI Studio Playground, for free by the way. And finally, Meta AI, which comes with uh, celebrity voices, including Aquafina, which is a choice they made. Next up is video generators. Remember when AI video was just a series of glitchy, nightmare-inducing frames? Well, we've come a long way, baby. There are new players that have completely changed the game. First, OpenAI's Sora went from, we're working on it, to, holy cow, that's incredible, in record time. Launched in December, it's now available to ChatGPT Plus and Pro subscribers. Now, what sets Sora apart is how it understands physics and motion. Earlier AR video tools would give people with six fingers and cars that move like they're underwater. Sora actually gets how things should move in the physical world. Most of the time, anyway. The platform does have some killer features, like Blend, which lets you mash up two scenes, or Endless Loops for those perfectly repeating clips, and different resolution options depending on your subscription. Now, you'll need a $20 a month ChatGPT Plus subscription or the even pricier $200 a month Pro subscription to use it. But once you subscribe, just hit up Sora.com and start describing what you want. Pro tip. Be super specific about camera movements and lighting. The more detail, the better the output. Now, while OpenAI was busy hyping Sora up, Hailuo quietly launched from China in September 2024 and quickly surpassed Sora in traffic. Its secret weapon? It actually listens to what you ask for. Seriously, like the prompt adherence is uncanny. If you ask for a red car driving through a foggy forest at dawn, you'd get exactly that, not a blue truck at noon. It sounds basic, but consistency is surprisingly rare in AI video. It's particularly good at product demos where consistency matters. I tried creating a series of product explainers with it, and uh, the character actually looked the same throughout all of them, which is a minor miracle in AI video. Another Chinese entry, Kling, offers more granular control over camera movements and lip syncing. If you've ever tried to get an AI character to say specific things and ended up with a horror movie mouth situation, you'll appreciate this. It's like the difference between being a director who can only shout general instructions versus one who can precisely control every aspect of the scene. Beyond generation, these AI video editors are making waves. InVideo turns your rambly script into an actual coherent video. Veed gives you auto captions that actually work, finally. <laughs> Filmora is like uh, having a color correction expert in your pocket. VivaCut provides filters and effects that don't scream, I edited this on my phone. And Beatly gives you absolute magic for making your TikToks look professional. Now, most of these offer free trials, so you can test them before committing. I've found that layering tools work best. You can generate with something like Sora, then polish with something like Veed or VivaCut. Now, AI development tools is where things get really wild. We now have two types of coding tools, ones for actual developers and ones that let people who think Python is just a snake build entire web apps. First, there's what's called agentic IDEs. These are basically super-powered coding environments for professional developers. Coming in at number 41 on the web rankings, Cursor is serving hundreds of thousands of developers who are tired of typing every character themselves. And fun fact, they just hit 200 million in annualized recurring revenue. What makes Cursor cool is its context awareness. It doesn't just understand the file you're working on, but the whole code base. It's like having a senior developer looking over your shoulder, except it never gets hangry or judges your variable naming. 
I've been using it to explain legacy code that looks like it was written by someone whose cat jumped on their keyboard, and it's honestly saved my sanity multiple times. Text to web apps are where things get truly bonkers. These are tools that let non-coders build entire apps. Debuting at 48 on the web list, but growing insanely fast, Bolt reported 20 million in annualized revenue and 2 million registered users in just two months. Not too shabby. Bolt lets you prompt, run, edit, and deploy full stack applications directly from your browser. No local setup required. In plain English, you can describe an app and it builds it. Then you can tweak it, test it, and put it online without ever leaving your browser. It's like if you could tell a chef, make me a chocolate cake with raspberry filling, and then they handled everything from buying the ingredients to serving it up on a plate for you. Now, the free plan gives you 100,000 tokens daily. That's enough for simple projects, with a pro plan at $18 a month if you're building something more substantial. I tried building a simple expense tracker with it, and the entire process from idea to working app took about 15 minutes. Five years ago, that would have been at least a week of work. As Andre Karpathy, AI legend and former OpenAI and Tesla engineer said, we're entering the era of vibe coding, where you just describe the vibe of what you want and the AI handles the technical details. What a time to be alive. Here's a quick rundown of a few other developer and workplace tools making waves. Lovable, which is like Bolt's slightly less feature-rich cousin. Moonshot, which makes design changes to sites like an e-commerce store to improve your conversion rates. Gamma, which is for people who hate making PowerPoints, aka all of us, and Hugging Face, which is where AI models go to party. It's actually all open source models get hosted there and you can download and run them for free. Let's zoom out for a second and talk about the A16Z report and what it actually tells us about the AI landscape. First, the scale is mind boggling. ChatGPT doubled its user base in just six months, hitting 400 million weekly users. That's not just tech enthusiasts anymore, that's mainstream adoption on a global scale. Seriously, check with your grandma, she might be using it. Second, competition is heating up fast. DeepSeek went from launch to 10 million users in just 20 days, beating ChatGPT's 40-day record. Silicon Valley isn't the only game in town anymore. Third, and this is fascinating, there's a huge gap between what's popular and what's profitable. According to the report, only 40% of the most used AI apps overlap with the ones making the most money. Here are some categories that aren't topping the download charts, but are raking in the cash. Plant identification apps, because never underestimate people's love for plants. Nutrition trackers, or the eternal quest to figure out if that's one serving or three. Language learning tools, because Duolingo taught us that people will pay to finally learn Spanish. Music tools to turn your terrible humming into an actual song, or make a song without knowing how to use instruments, and dictation apps, because typing is so 2020. The lesson? Solving a specific valuable problem for a smaller audience can actually be more profitable than building a general purpose tool for everyone. Another insight, we're seeing a rapid specialization in video tools. Instead of one-size-fits-all solutions, companies are focusing on really specific use cases or styles, creating a more diverse ecosystem of tools. For example, Pika is making viral Snapchat filter-like effects, while tools like Runway still try to appeal to more established video production professionals, and Kling and Luma appeal to more online hobbyists, as best as I can tell anyway, who make those tools for lack of a better word to create AI viral swap videos. Now let's speed run through some of the other specialized tools you should have on your radar before we dip out. For image generation and editing, there's Midjourney, which is still the artist's choice for beautiful imagery. Ideogram, which can make text and images that doesn't look weird. Leonardo, which is for when you want to control every little detail of what you're making. Photo Room, which gives you product photography without the actual photography. Ramini, which makes grandma's grainy photos look HD. And by the way, there's also Topaz Labs, which does this for video, which video production professionals really love. And Beauty Plus, for when reality isn't quite flattering enough. Now, not mentioned on this list is Firefly, which is Adobe's generative AI collection that creates images, videos, and vectors from text prompts. Firefly's key differentiator is that it's specifically designed to be commercially safe. Unlike other generative AI tools, Adobe trained Firefly exclusively on licensed content, Adobe stock images, and public domain material, never on Adobe's users' content, making it particularly suitable for professionals and commercial use. But you know, that doesn't really go viral, so sorry Firefly, you didn't make the cut. 
You know what did go viral though? ChatGPT's new image generator, which may have put a few of these tools out of business by the time you watch this video due to how capable it is. Expect another video on that sometime soon. But if you want a quick explainer, just go to the neuron.ai and check out our write up on it there. For audio and voice tools, First up, we've got Eleven Labs, which provides voice cloning and hundreds of licensed voices that don't sound like robots. In the narrow streets of London. Suno, an AI music generator so you can write a song about anything, uh, even your pet goldfish if you want. And Taki, also from Hi Luo, which lets you customize AI characters with different voices using advanced text-to-speech technology. Now, Eleven Labs is really the tool to beat here. I've used it to create AI voice parody videos before, and the quality is surprisingly good. Like, wait, is that a real person? Good. Now, OpenAI just released some new audio tools as well that are competing with Eleven Labs and trying to eat into their market share. They have advanced voice mode, but they want to become the go-to AI voice tool for everybody. Early demos show these voices are really good, and the level of control you can get over how they talk is pretty incredible. If you go to openai.fm, you can try it out there. Uh, hey, welcome to the bank, I guess. If you actually need something, listen up. For educational tools, we've got Brainly, which is for homework help without the uh, judgment, StudyX, which is like having a tutor that never gets tired, and Photomath, a math homework solver that shows its work. Photomath has saved many parent-child relationships during homework time. If you're a parent or a child struggling with homework, it's uh, probably worth checking out. For translation and language, we've got High Translate, for translation that actually gets idioms, and Luzia, for learning languages without the guilt trips. Now, these aren't the only tools for translation. These are just the ones that are trending. For example, there's Speak, which is backed by OpenAI and is fairly good, and Lilt, which is more for enterprise use. So what does all this mean for you? We're definitely living in the golden age of AI tools, where capabilities that seemed like science fiction in 2022 are now just Tuesday. As you can see, these tools aren't just shiny toys anymore. They're becoming essential productivity tools integrated into work across multiple industries. The novelty phase is over. We're in the utility phase now. We can also say that the most successful AI apps share three traits. They solve specific problems better than you could manually. They make complex tasks accessible to mere mortals and they actually fit into how you already work. My prediction? We'll see even more specialization and more tools purpose-built for really specific industries and use cases. The days of one AI to rule them all are probably over, though ChatGPT is trying everything to keep its lead, including cutting prices and studio geeblifying everything. Now, if you're just starting, begin with the major platforms like ChatGPT, Claude, or Perplexity. Get comfortable with how they work, then branch out to specialized tools as you identify specific needs for your workflow. What about you? What did you think about this report? Which of these AI tools are you already using, if any? Drop a comment below, especially if you found hidden gems I didn't mention. <coughs> Last thing, make sure to sign up for the Neuron.ai. Our AI news written for real people aims to make you smarter about AI in five minutes or less a day. Thanks for watching, and remember, the robots are not replacing us yet. They're just handling the boring stuff so we can focus on the fun stuff. See you in the next video.